The year has thinned. The light seems weaker. The year is tired and the season is running out. Yet we are here in the place of life for this place believes in things beyond time and season. We might live in the echo of stables, an incarnation holding on to faith in the last year's last days. Yet, what do we do but perform acts of renewal and rebirth, of baptism and hope, of seeking new life shaped in Jesus? So let us gather in what the world sees as the cusp of the year, yet we know as another day, in the eternity of love, as we celebrate who we are and who we are yet to be. Come, let us be together. Come, let us worship.
A reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 to 21. No longer then do we judge anyone by human standards, even if at one time we judge Christ according to human standards. We no longer do so. Anyone who is joined to Christ is a new being. The old is gone, the new has come. All this is done by God, who through Christ changed us from enemies into his friends and gave us the task of making others his friends also. Our message is that God was making the whole human race his friends through Christ. God did not keep an account of their sins, and he has given us the message which tells us how he makes them his friends. Here we are, then, speaking for Christ, as though God himself were making his appeal for us. We plead on Christ's behalf. Let God change you from enemies into his friends. Christ was without sin, but for our sake God made him share our sin, in order that in union with him we might share the righteousness of God. Amen. Happy New Year from the Mance. It's a wonderful privilege to wish you all the best for the new year and uh, the evidence still of some of the delights of Christmas on the background, a few chocolates and uh, a few reminders of gifts and the celebrations of love and commitment and belonging and joy and peace. So I hope and pray that uh, something of that essence might be carried forward by you and with you and to all those you love and cherish into the new year. The other day I was asking someone how they might celebrate Christmas and New Year and they say uh, in their understanding of the scripture they don't necessarily see Christmas as a biblical concept and we had a bit of an interesting conversation around that and they reminded me too that uh, there is no real biblical warrant for saying Happy New Year and drew my attention to the Roman god Janus who looks in both uh, directions and had very little to do with the Christian faith. But there is a sense in which um, Janus somehow is a reminder of the ways in which the Christian church uh, saw the presence of Jesus in everything and the triumph of love and life and resurrection uh, allowed them indeed to baptize most experiences of life and seasons, for instance, Easter and Christmas and New Year became indicators of uh, God's presence in the midst of changing seasons, invitations to seeing God even in the darkness as the light of the world in Christ and greeting a new year with the possibility of transition, looking back and also looking forward. And so even though this isn't necessarily a particularly decisive uh, Christian feast, it is an opportunity for us to draw on the biblical record and for us to look for signs of God at work. One of the things that I've done regularly throughout this period of coronavirus and the challenges throughout the years 2020 and 2021, and we're hoping that 2022 will not be as dramatic or demanding, but yet we never know with life, is officiate at funerals. And so I've constantly be coming back to two very important passages of scripture. You've heard them before many, many times, but Indulge me for a moment. Uh, they are worth repeating. The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And then the stirring reminder of John as he reflects on the significance of Jesus and the power of the resurrection, and these words, part of the closing discourse, uh, the closing encounters of Jesus with his closest friends, recorded in John chapter 14. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am you may be also. 
and you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I'm the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. And so, yes, we hear these words from the prophet as we enter a new year. Fear not, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed, for I'm your God. I strengthen you and I help you uphold you with my saving right hand. And so my honest hope is as we reflect on the Christian faith and as we reflect on our own experience of life, we're able to go into the year reflecting on what the previous years have held for us anticipating the possibilities of God's presence. Although we wish each other a happy new year and we honestly delight and hope for a year marked by a measure of physical and material and spiritual prosperity, we hope that we, we probably realize, I should say, that the more significant reality is somehow can we discern presence, meaning, love that holds us even in the dark places even in the despairing places, even in the grieving moments, even in the sadness, even in the struggles, the fears, the anxieties, the longings. And so my invitation to you is a brief one. Look for the presence in Jesus Christ, the presence of God offered in a very real human being who has shared our human life and death. In other words, didn't have everything go his own way, didn't always have great wealth, in fact, the Son of Man had no place to lay his head, didn't always have friends surrounding him. In fact, many denied and betrayed, deserted and left him, didn't always feel the sense of inspiration, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, is able to pray, not my will, but thy will be done. So look for that sense of presence, that sense of whisper, that sense of grace that enfolds, embraces and holds you even when life doesn't go your way. And look for that presence along the way. Sometimes uh, life can be frustrating, but Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And so Jesus goes with us along the way. And it's along the way, the earliest disciples were called followers of the way before they were called Christians or little Christs, are those who are open to the presence and the possibility of life that springs eternal, abundant, rich, even in the midst of chaos and crisis. The Christian faith discerns the possibilities of two different viewpoints regarding time. Kronos, the natural time that moves from day to day and week to week and month to month, and Kairos, the moment of decision, the moment of crisis, the moment of possibility. And so as you go along the way, my honest hope is that you would sense something of the Jesus who comes alongside you and surprises you with that real strength and presence and peace and joy. And finally, uh, my honest hope is that we would discern some of the important questions along the way. Um, when, when we come to faith in Christ, it's not like all our questions are answered. We can't put God in a box. There are no easy answers necessarily to this dilemma, possibility, gift, fragility of life. But in this coming year, maybe ask yourself, who am I saying thank you to? Why? When? How? And maybe just maybe in the midst of that, part of that thanksgiving can be in the direction of God. For the gift of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of family and friends and meaningful relationships and forgiveness and new beginnings. Maybe it can also be a question of what am I picking up? What am I putting down? What am I focusing on? What am I letting go? Why? Life is fragile. These uh, months and dare we say it, even years of COVID have taught all of us that. All of us have to come to that moment of reflecting on our own vulnerability. I love the way one person reflects on it as a, as a little bit like a journey across a river with a ferryman who says, listen, your time's up, your number's up. Come now. I want to take you to the other side. And he says this. When death arrives to collect me and my baggage, 
I will not jump to attention or act in haste from some half-remembered sense of duty. Neither will I leap into his car and fluster, panic or dread. Rather, I'll take a few moments to sit with everything. For I have a story to tell, a story of what I did and when and why. So while death waits like a ferryman on a tea break, I gather together the community of voices who have lived my life, gather them together and say thank you. Yes, thank you. We're all aware that we did our best and no one should feel ashamed. No one. We did our best. Half knowing, but wholehearted. Now it's time to go. That might be a poem that reflects specifically on death and passing. But even as we say goodbye to a year, there is a sort of death within us as we welcome a new year. So my honest hope is, yes, have a happy new year. But happiness that is rooted in the joy that is beyond all understanding, the joy and the love of God for each one of us. And so let us pray for that. Loving and gracious God, you know us each. You know us in these circumstances and the totality of our life story. You know, our ups and downs, our griefs, our losses, our struggles, our questions, our fears, our pains. You know us. You desperately know us. In the midst of that knowing, guide us and lead us ever so gently by your spirit so that truly we might enter this year as those anticipating your presence alongside us, your spirit work within us, your glory unfolding in our lives. So, Lord, we pray, yes, for a happy new year marked by the joy of your loving and gracious presence. In Jesus' name. Amen. We leave today going into a future as yet unmapped. Take faith with you as you go. Into the parts of your life not yet travelled by love. Into the parts of the world unexplored by grace. Let compassion and hope be the roads that you follow. Today, and always. Amen. Should all acquaintance be forgot and they forgot to mind? Should all Bye.